Hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rich Lungo of Flycast Partners, and I'll be your host for today's presentation. Today, our topic for our webcast is seamless client management through Remedy Force, presented by Flycast Partners' very own senior SE, Kyle Hamilton. Now, Kyle has been with Flycast Partners for several years now, and prior to that, he actually worked for BMC software on many of these different types of products. So he is very familiar with both of these products and then some as far as BMC products and other products out there are concerned. Uh, he has nearly 30 years in the IT space. He has uh, numerous certifications, has had uh, different levels of ITIL training and has been instrumental in helping organizations find the right processes and the right software fits for their individual needs. Before we get started, let me introduce Flycast Partners. Flycast Partners offers best-in-class implementation services and training in IT service management, IT asset management, IT operations management, IT security, enterprise service management, and workload automation spaces, all using ITIL best practices. Our professional services team has well over 50 700 professional services engagements, both on-site and remote. And as an organization, Flycast Partners has nearly 1,300 regular customers throughout Canada and the United States that come back over and over again. I encourage you to reach out to us at 844-FLYCAST, that's 844-359-2278, or visit our website. We have IT experts standing by Monday through Friday during normal business hours from 8.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. They're happy to chat with you about anything. You just want to chat about IT today. You want to ask questions, get uh, data sheets, white papers. Maybe you're looking for some remote administration services or, or other type of evaluations on your current environment. Uh, could be uh, uh, tech support. Uh, we do offer support for Canada and United States and multiple tools out there. Uh, whatever those needs might be, please, Take the time, go to the website, chat with those guys. That's what they're there for. Or you can simply email us at info at flycastpartners.com. Now, without further delay, I am going to go ahead and turn this over to Kyle. He's got a lot of information to cover today. And I encourage you to actually send us your questions today, and we will get those answered for you uh, a, a little later today. But go ahead and send those questions to us, and we'll get answers for you. And without further delay, I'm going to turn it over to you, Kyle. Well, welcome and good afternoon, good morning, bring on where you may be. Um, appreciate you spending the time with us today. Um, my name is Kyle Hamilton. I'm a sales engineer with Flycast Partners, and I'm here to conduct um, today's webinar. Um, today, we're focusing on uh, how you can um, achieve uh, a more seamless integration um, between service management and endpoint management or BMC's client management more specifically, um, and some of the synergies that you can gain through the use of, of both two tools. There might be people on the phone that uh, use Remedy Force today that maybe you're looking for uh, desktop management, endpoint management solution. Um, so this will be a good exposure to what client management offers. And there may be some client management customers that you know, are looking for for a service desk and service management solution. So for both of those audiences, hopefully there'll be something really good uh, to come out of today, as well as for those that it's the first time to see both. So you can see what's possible uh, through the use of these BMC tools. So we're gonna start and talk about really just some of the benefits that, that you hear about all the time. And then we're gonna get to some of the real nice to have benefits. Um, a lot of times the integration between service management and any kind of asset database really just uh, stems around or is focused on the integration of the data. So being able to go and collect and capture all the information on your desktops or laptops, servers, switches, routers, et cetera, and being able to have that automatically populated into the service desk so that you can build a CMDB, manage a CMDB, you know, and keep it up to date and accurate without having to devote an entire army of, of individuals uh, to be tasked with maintaining the data. So that's that's kind of its core purpose. Um, and that's where a lot of the integrations start and stop is by allowing you to go grab the data or allowing you to, to push data into that database if need be. Um, but it doesn't go beyond 
you know, the sharing of data. But don't get me wrong, that's that's an important piece. And just having the CMDB is a worthwhile goal um, because it uh, will make processes up and down the ITIL ladder better from troubleshooting on incidents to uh, analyzing impact on changes. The CMDB can enhance virtually every process that you have within the service desk by having access to some of this data. However, there's a lot of other advantages that can be gained through integration um, and the type of integration that we're looking at here today with, with Remedy Force and client management. In that, the only way that you can really get this type of an integration between two products is when they're both from the same vendor um, because it has to be done in code um, in order to be able to make it seamless um, and make it look uh, easy for the end user while there may be a lot of complex interactions taking place on the back end, um, but making it not only a more user friendly experience for staff and for customers, um, but also a much easier environment to manage ongoing. So let's leave the CMDB behind and we'll talk about some of the more important facets of, of integration besides just having the data. So having that seem to be populated, you know, the biggest benefit right off the bat is that I have the ability within Remedy Force to then access those assets, right? So I know that they're accurate and being kept up to date. I mean, when somebody contacts the service desk and they need to report an issue, their email's not working or they're unable to log in to, you know, Microsoft Office 365, whatever the case may be, you want to be able to document in detail, you know, exactly which device are they having that problem with? You know, is it their desktop machine? Is it their laptop? Right? So you can get a list of those devices that are assigned to that user. That's the, you know, that's the real important piece. Um, so that you can start creating reports and building history. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. So that's, you know, the idea behind having that CMDB is while you're logging an incident, when you're creating that problem, when you're creating the change, you can draw upon that those assets um, so you can link it to the ticket so that that's there for reporting and history. It also provides you the ability, of course, to, to provide some additional detail about that device, some subject matter expertise, so that you know, in the case of incidents, you can troubleshoot you know, better and more efficiently um, than what you can do just going, you know, straight without uh, any type of, of integration. Now, one of the first places you'll see kind of this, the seamless integration between the two is in the case where there may be da data within Remedy Force that I need that's not available to me within Remedy Force. Uh, the idea or concept of federated data, being able to access information through the Remedy Force user interface that's not actually in Remedy Force at the moment. Um, now, for those of y'all that use client management regularly, um, you'll probably be used to, especially if you use it with Remedy Force, be used to seeing this, this initial pop-up tab. Um, everybody's probably pretty familiar with it if you've used it. However, there's another tab kind of tucked away in the background um, that relates directly back to client management. So the first tab at the top, is when I want to browse and search and select from a device that's actually in the Remedy for CMDB. We've gone and grabbed it, we populated it, the record's there, we can go and look at it, you know, through the CMDB uh, tab in Remedy Force. However, that synchronization may be happening once a day, once a week, maybe even less frequently in some cases. So there may be instances and examples where somebody contacts the service desk, related to a device that has not been synchronized. Um, it's not available in Remedy Force. So by having this tab and by having that, that uh, direct integration through the APIs and through the code, this gives me the ability to go out and actually browse records in this case that are still sitting in the client management database. So that if I need to reference any one of these, I can select it and call it out just as if it was already in Remedy for us. And the nice thing is by making this selection and making this choice, um, 
Remedy Force is actually making the query to client management to immediately go and grab that record. So um, now it's there. Now, if I need it again tomorrow or I need it again next week, it's in the Remedy Force CMDB and you won't have to go through you know, that tab again to go looking for it. Um, that way you have access to be able to look at information and data beyond just what's in the Remedy Force database, which is typically the, the requirement when it comes to um, you know, being able to tie the two together. Now, the other big item that the integration gets you is when I call out a specific device, I'm gonna, we'll do this one down here. So we'll do Windows 10, I believe. So when I call that asset out, really it's in the side window or the, the CI field that's directly on the form. Um, the one thing that gives me through the integration is the ability to take action on that device. So if you have client management and you have that agent installed on that endpoint, um, I have the, the ability then to call up this actions window. Now, if you have the CMDB populated today, um, however, you don't have client management, you'll probably notice when you go into that menu, it's gonna be grayed out. You won't be able to, to access it or select it. Um, same thing's going to go here. If I have listed a device that doesn't have that agent, then when I go to select this action drop down here, I'm not going to have any options available within this drop down. Um, only when you have that client management installed does this feature become available and enabled. Because at this point, I'm not looking at an asset within the Remedy Force CMDB. I'm looking at an asset that's live, that's out there on the network right now, and I'm communicating to it through that endpoint agent so that rather than having to look at the data that's in remedy force that may be out of sync or out of out of date um, i have the ability to go directly to the device ask the device for hardware and software information so that i know that i'm looking at the latest you know and greatest up-to-date details on that particular device so in this case i'm no longer you know pulling this information out of the cmdb much of this you wouldn't want to populate in the cmdb but again, it provide, can provide some valuable additional detail um, above and beyond what you have in the CMDB to provide things like shared drives and uh, you know drive mappings and things like that. Deeper look at the software, the financial side. How long has it been out there in service? What was the cost? Is it you know out of warranty? Is it out of support? A lot of things that you're not going to take the time to populate into the Remedy for CMDB. Um, However, it's good information to have at your disposal. And through the integration, you're able to bring this information up on those devices in real time. Now, in addition to being able to simply, you know, query or pull information from the device, also gives you management capability. And right? so the ability, if I want to, uh, let's say, take remote control of a device, um, use your calls and service desk, they need help with a particular issue, um, I, as a service desk staff, as long as I can identify that device and link it to that ticket, and it has that client management agent, um, and I can do this from anywhere, right, via browser, you'll see it gives me a little executable file, I click it, and the next thing I'll see will be that user's desktop. So now, right there from the ticket that I'm submitting for that user, I have the ability to go in and either watch what that user's doing, simply you know, do a little follow along and guide them along the way, or I can ask them to you know, take a seat back, let me you know, dive in and take a look, and which one just log in and you know, resolve the issue or, or investigate a little bit further as needed. That way I'm not having to, I'm not having to go in and open up another console I'm not having to remember another set of credentials, um, another URL, another you know thing to click on in the start menu. Um, so that's kind of the first you know piece of beginning to make it you know look seamless from the user's perspective is when, from their viewpoint, they're using one tool in this case Remedy Force, but in order to provide you know that full picture there's really two or three things going on tools in the background that are enabling this to occur 
um, but it provides that seamless experience um, so that you know your staff and users on a daily basis have a much better um, you know experience going in and supporting users uh, it goes beyond the remote control and can extend not only into some of the basic features like you see in this drop down menu below so being able to wake it up if it's asleep being able to reboot it if need be you know uh shut it down if somebody left and forgot to turn their pc off um, but you also have the ability to craft and create what's referred to as operational rules and yeah, many of you using client management may be familiar with them but one thing you can do with the operational rules from client management is you can throw them over the fence and you can make them available to users within the service desk so that now not only can i access the user's device directly you have the inventory information remote control of the device but i have the ability to take other actions on the device so that could be everything from just asking for an update of some information, maybe setting the power settings if I want to, you know, throttle the the uh, timeout values for the screen and you know powering off the hard drive, et cetera, or all the way to things like deploying a piece of software. Could be a you know desktop application, could be a patch, um, you name it. Could be as esoteric as you know just restoring somebody's desktop shortcut all the way to you know, provisioning an account and getting them set up for you know, deploying Office 365, something along those lines, so that you can take things that require access to that admin console for client management. It takes some experience and exposure to that to be able to craft and create those operational rules. But once they're built, then it makes it easy for you to put those operational rules in the hands of your level one and your level two service desk staff so that they now have access to potentially remediate and handle incidents at the service desk um, with much better with much better success you know so higher first call resolution percentage should be one immediate benefit just by virtue of the fact that i no longer have to uh, forward that ticket or escalate that ticket onto a system administrator or a network admin or you know an app admin um, now I've got the ability to take action and provide that resolution for that user, even though I don't have the, the permissions or the skill set, perhaps to be able to do that on my own. But by virtue of the fact that I can have somebody working behind the curtains, you know, administering and configuring client management for the environment, and then be able to expose all of that that effort to everybody else that may have you know, a need to use it or a desire to use it. Um, that way, when somebody contacts the service desk and you know, as I mentioned, maybe they, uh, they did walk away from the office and they call and say, I forgot to turn off my machine. If I've got that action built for me, all I have to do is select that here to be able to execute it. Right? It simply tells the, the endpoint agent I need you to run this command. The agent does so, reports back success or failure. And the nice thing about doing it in this fashion versus doing it in siloed applications is you gain all of the audit trail and the logging that takes place by, by doing it through Remedy Force. So that if I am going through Remedy Force and using incident to make changes or to uh, uh, put a fix in on that user device. I want to know who did what and when. So as long as I go through this interface, that part, you know, the record keeping part becomes seamless. So now I don't have to create that task. I don't have to close that task and document what happened and um, and when and and who. Now all I have to do is go in and click on the button and take whatever action you know that user needs through those actions or through that that drop down menu, knowing that whenever I do and there's automatically going to be logged in that ticket. So it's it's providing me with capabilities that I might not otherwise have. And it's also saving me some time and effort on the back end from just the documentation and the reporting and recording aspect. Um, so it could you know, make that part 
don't say seamless, but uh, uh, most decidedly, I'll say more efficient, right? Than than doing it, you know, manually or by hand. And it's going to give you much better uh, reporting and auditing capability because you're not going to be losing those things if they deploy a piece of software, if they remote control in a machine, the system will log that activity, right? So that you've got you know, a detail of all of that, but without having to rely on your staff to, to go back and remember to do that, because that's quite often where a lot of the information gets lost is in just not remembering to go back and, and document things as deeply or as, um, as correctly as you would like. Now, Besides just being able to interact directly with the device, there's really kind of another level that you can go to beyond just being able to provide automated actions to your staff and um, to your employees to be able to execute, but being able to make it seamless so that you can take the service desk out of the equation completely. Um, avoid having to not only respond to the ticket, but not even having to see the ticket. Now you you may have a lot of tools like client management provide some kind of self-service capability within themselves. So if you're building software packages and, and whatnot, um, you can have a portal where they can go and you know browse that content, be able to click on something and you know download Adobe Acrobat Reader for themselves or their desktop or you know Chrome browser, whatever it may be, especially if it's unlicensed software. But the best way to go about that is to, instead of providing that in a siloed fashion, if you've got a service desk and you've got an endpoint management or desktop management solution, is to drive those two together so that as opposed to you know, going to the self-service portal in the service desk to submit an incident, um, and then having to go to another portal to get my Chrome browser or to get you know, an update for Microsoft Office installed. Why not take the two and put them together so that you only have one place to direct users to go, much less confusion, as well as giving you the ability to, to put some real automation around the process, as well as giving you much better audit capability in that instance as well. Um, most of the time, you know, in your desktop management tools, you're going to deploy software and you'll have a, a log or a, you know, a, a record created that'll show that it was deployed and when. But the one thing that you're really taking away from yourself in that case is the metrics, the, the data having to do with that automation. If they're going into your desktop management tool and they're deploying software and installing things, you know, within seconds or minutes um, using that portal, and you've spent time building that and constructing that environment, you want to benefit from the fact that that efficiency is there and that those tickets are getting resolved and closed in a, in a quick and expedient manner. If you leave them broken apart and they go to desktop management to get their software and you know fixes and needs from a, an application and hardware perspective, and then they go to the service desk to tell you that it's broken or they need to order something new, um, your, your metrics, your reports, your dashboards are all gonna be missing all of that automation that's taking place in the desktop management tool that, that you could use to drive your stats either up or down, depending upon what you're looking at. Um, you know, I wanna know that if users went through and installed 800 applications for themselves through the desktop management portal today, I wanna show that. I want to show that, hey, 800 users got their software today in 30 seconds or less, and we didn't have to raise a finger. Um, so what you can do, what's possible, is to take client management and utilize what you've already set up, you know, the things that you're already using today, you're just doing it through the client management console, and follow that same kind of mentality, just take all of that and make it available to the self-service users directly through Remedy Force. So what we could do is to be able to go to an end user portal now and just say, uh, I need Firefox, right? And as I go through and I, I search, I want to, oh, eh, I guess I don't need, need. 
what it's going to do is it's going to look up this Firefox browser install, which you may have, you know, have something similar in your system like this today. A lot of users do, but in most cases, when users are submitting this request, have something installed. Either one of two things happening. The worst case scenario, of course, somebody's grabbing a CD or DVD and they're getting in their car, or driving across town, and and you know, sneaker netting it out to the users. Um, better case, obviously, you're using something like client management. Somebody's getting that ticket, they're logging into the console, they're scheduling it for distribution at whatever time's appropriate, and then they go back into Remedy Force and update that ticket and close it later, hopefully. Um, but that's really typically where you see that stop and start. What you'd rather do, or the ultimate goal would be to have the request, which you'll see in this case doesn't require any input, right? There's no other questions uh, since we know who the user is, there's a blog on, uh, now we know what they need and we know their devices, right? Because um, they're in the CMDB, they've been populated, they're up to date and they're linked to that user. So that not only staff can see what's assigned to that particular uh, individual, that customer, but the customers themselves can see what assets they have assigned to them. Not only is it just nice in some cases to be able to have some of this information I mean, in some cases, just to be able to answer questions you may be getting asked. You know, uh, what's your asset tag number, your serial number, things like that. Um, but to be able to, to easily create tickets for themselves on those assets, you know, so that they're not having to remember a serial tag or an asset tag. They just look up the asset and say, I need to create a ticket related to this device. And that saves them the hassle of having to answer questions about oh, what's the device name, what's the MAC address, things like that. Um, but when I go through and I actually create that request for that user, what I really don't want is I don't want to see it. If I can automate that all the way out to the endpoint so that it doesn't require any manual intervention, all the better. And in this case, by using that endpoint agent, and having that Firefox package created in client management and sitting out there ready to go, you know, ready to be distributed, all we have to do is wait for that user to come through that self-service portal and make that request. And we can immediately hand that off to the client management agent so that when a user goes through and, and says, I need this software, we don't have to wait on anybody to pick that ticket up or to respond to that ticket manually the agent can immediately respond and say, okay, I've got it. I know where the package is. I'll go grab it, install it, and I'll let you know when I'm done. That way, instead of seeing these tickets for, you know, installs of software, whether it's Firefox or anything else that you can think of, um, those fade into the background of the service desk. Um, the only time you would really see those, know those, or want them there is going to be when it comes time to report. So that you can, and this is what I mentioned a while ago, where you have the ability then to look back at the end of the day, and you might think, hey, it's been kind of a slow day, not much going on. And you pull this up, up and you can see there's 500 or 400 tickets have gone through here through the portal that you never even saw. Now, I don't know that you'll be able to do that with the flooded bathroom. That's probably a bad example. But with the majority of these on here that we see, um, that kind of automation is possible, whether we're talking about just installing a piece of software as a singular request, or whether we're talking about getting somebody's entire, you know, desktop configured and deployed because they're getting ready to start work next Monday. So that can, you know, just like anything else, be taken to different degrees. Um, but that's kind of the ultimate, you know, goal of, of not just the integration, but having kind of the seamless integration is again where I've got something now in the background here behind Remedy Force that's really doing all the heavy lifting. You know, it's it's the tool that's actually got to you know allow you to create the software packages and target the right you know machines and and individuals and set it up the way that give you the flexibility to configure it the way you want, um, and then making that readily available so that end users can more or less just self help on a vast majority of, of desktop application related issues. Whether that's getting something new or simply 
having it reinstalled because you deleted a folder or you know you blew something up and you just need to get a working copy back. Um, that way you can free up the service desk uh, to focus on you know, maybe other internal projects or support for another you know part of the environment. Um, but by looking for opportunities like the Firefox example, um, to take client management and provide that kind of seamless experience, you know, certainly for the customer because they're getting software, you know, installed in, you know, say 60 seconds, you know, two minutes or less, and they've got what they need and they don't have to talk to anybody. You don't have to wait on hold, listen to Zach. Um, much better for their standpoint. And obviously service desk techs will be, you know, pleased as punch because that's just one less ticket that they have to see and in most cases, that's one last ticket that they have to see that then gets escalated back to the endpoint manager or the server manager or that server admin who then has to log in and, and take those steps to deploy that software or whatever they ask for. So there's advantages you know, to the integration, not only at the you know, frontline service desk, but really kind of all the way up and down the chain, which is really what the the impetus or the reason for those uh, server admins, the desktop admins, the ones that are building up the software packages, they're you know managing the endpoints and patching things. That's their driver to spend the time to make those, create those operational rules, to make those software packages available to the service desk, because that's going to be one last ticket that lands on their plate eventually. Every minute that they take building another template to be used or another software package that can be deployed automatically um, is one less ticket that's going to be on their plate or in their queue when they log in tomorrow. So that's you know their their reason you know for wanting to provide that and push that capability down to the front lines is now they can handle it in the first call. First call resolution percentage goes up at the service desk less and less gets escalated. Now you've got, you know, this expensive, you know, as you're going from tier two to tier three, um, you know, architects on the back end, you're no longer, you know, holding up their day or taking up their time, you know, five minutes at a time, nothing difficult, but something that can't readily be done by anybody else, either because of skill sets, permissions, you know, security, what have you. So um, the integration between Remedy Force and client management you know, and the fact that it is seamless and can be made seamless from all those perspectives, you know, provides a valuable um, benefit that you can't get. And it's one of those, this, you know, the whole is, is greater than the sum of the parts. The two tools themselves, fantastic in their own right at what they do. Um, but when you take them together um, and kind of blend them, not so you're using two tools or it looks that you are, but so that you can make that user experience better from a 360 degree perspective, from everybody's perspective, you know, that's when you really start to see some of the big benefits, not just through the service desk, not just through client management, but through the automation uh, that's possible uh, because of that seamless integration. So hopefully, again, for those of y'all that are familiar with the two tools, or even for those that haven't, um, you've got a little uh, example or an idea of not only what the tools are capable of in and of themselves, but what's possible um, and what's available to you out there today that could really be used to enhance the user experience as well as the service levels that you're delivering to customers. So I hope everybody's had a, a, a great day. I wish you the great rest of your day. And thanks for joining us on today's webinar. Rich, I'll throw it back. Thank you, Kyle. I really appreciate you presenting today. And uh, we have run out of time for this particular presentation. We only uh, allowed ourselves about 30 minutes. Folks, if you have questions, please go ahead and send those to us. You can call us at 844-FLYCAST. That's 844-359-2278. Or you can email them at info at flycastpartners.com or go to our website and chat with us live. Uh, during normal business hours, uh, 8.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. We're happy to get the answers you're looking for. Kyle, I want to thank you again for taking time out of your busy day. I know you've got a lot going on being the last day of the quarter. And audience, I know you are very busy in IT. Thank you for taking time 
uh, with us today. And I hope that each and every one of you have a great rest of your week. And until our next broadcast, we'll see you then.